Welcome to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco, bringing you interviews with industry experts and regular folks who tested the job search waters and succeeded, and strategies to tell your story and land your job interviews in 60 days, guaranteed. Here's your host, Virginia Franco. My four colleagues of Sarah Johnson, Maureen McCann, Anna Lokotova, and Adrian Tom. And we are so excited to announce our new endeavor that will begin officially in January, but there is a page now. It's Job Search Secret Weapon. Um, It is an online membership platform that connects job seekers with everything they need and in one place. It is the brainchild of all of us. Um, We met on LinkedIn and then we met in person. And then we discovered that we all had a passion for making job search easier. Um, Job Search Secret Weapon is the industry's first job search membership platform that features five Uh, the the insights of five industry experts. Members will have access to high dollar information, including downloadable templates, videos, live calls, Facebook support, and articles for a very reasonable and low monthly fee. Um, All uh, the, with our group is multinational from Canada and the U.S., um, multi-generational. There's millennials and Gen Xers amongst us. And we, together, we bring to the table over 30 years of success launching and lifting the careers of business leaders. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. I'm excited to have all of you on our podcast, on this podcast, I should say. Um, what? Let me think. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. Um, Adrian, why don't you start off? T- I mean, I've, you've heard me give the um, overview. Tell me um, what made you create, what made you jump into Job Search Secret Weapon? Right. So, I mean, as you mentioned, the story started with all of us coming together, um, you know, with one primary uh, focus, and that is that we love to support job seekers, but we still felt that there was work to be done in this space um, and work that would be done better together. So, you know, we all share the belief, not just myself, but I, I, I think I can speak for all of us that, you know, the world is a better place when people are happy at work. Um, but job seekers are often frustrated because they're, they're unable to access clear resources or affordable support to help them locate that meaningful work. Um, and there's a lot of information on the internet and people are not always sure what to trust. So after much discussion and research, like you mentioned, we've teamed up to help take the guesswork out of job search with a membership platform that's designed to connect job seekers with those high level resources and strategies at a fraction of the cost of working with any of us one-on-one. And it's been really exciting to see it come together. Like you mentioned, there's, you know, 30 plus odd years of uh, combined job search expertise amongst our group. Um, But also it's really exciting because we are finally going to be able to give job seekers, you know, a way to cut through all that noise Um, access trusted content and get the answers that they're looking for. Yeah, no, I agree. And and we've all talked, it's just so exciting to be able to connect with people um, en masse um, because in our own businesses, we really, we all work with people one-on-one and this gives us an opportunity to get that message out to so many more. Exactly. Um, Anna, what do you see as one or two major challenges that are facing people that are testing the job search waters or, or maybe trying to make a career change today? There's something that you see that they tend to all face? Sure. That's a great question, actually. Um, I think if you're someone who didn't have to job search in a while, I think there's the obvious challenge of simply staying informed and keeping up with all the changes that have been happening in the world of hiring, promotions, and job search. Because so much communication has moved to online. There's the applicant tracking systems. There's constantly new updates and new trends, new techniques and processes. And more and more interviews, let's say, take place over like on video, for example. So, so many people struggle to simply 
keep up with all those latest trends? Like, how do you know how to be prepared? How do you know what has happened in the last couple of years? What has changed and how you can adjust to all that? So that's the obvious challenge for sure. But I think the biggest challenge truly for anyone who is job searching today or contemplating whether they should maybe look for better opportunities and options for themselves is to figure out a way how to stand out. Because so many people today simply lose themselves in the crowd because everyone is using the exact same advice that they've read in the exact same resource or whatever. So at the end of the day, you're looking at like five different resumes of five completely different people with different backgrounds and professions. But for some reason, those resumes look exactly the same. So there's obviously the challenge of not letting yourself blend in and figure out a way how you can communicate with employers in a way that would resonate. Yeah, no, that, that's such a good point. And, and to your point about change, I'm really old and I've been doing this for a long time. And the advice and the way I wrote even 10 years ago just wouldn't cut it today. Um, so that is a challenge for people. The advice that they learned back when just doesn't, doesn't resonate with readers and with audiences anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Maureen, um, I believe you are in the same uh, generation as me. So I will ask you, what do you find (laughs) that clients are most surprised by in terms of all the change that's gone on? Yeah. So to both your point and Anna's point, there's, yeah, you want to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to some of these things. But I think, you know, really what I think I spend a lot of time talking to people about is let's back this up a second before we get into any of the tactical pieces. What do you want? And I think this is the piece where a lot of people just sort of skim over it really quickly and they, they just keep going in whatever momentum or direction they're going in. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times we'll take a step back and say, okay, hold on a second. Now, if we're going to get technical and theorize about this for a second, um, you know, the father of career guidance says, Frank Parson says, it's really about first knowing who you are and what you want. Number two is being able to understand the market and what the market wants, and then pairing those two together and then putting together a tactical approach. So a lot of times we'll spend, um, you know, just having a couple of initial conversations around what is it that you really want? What's clarity like to you? And I think where people tend to get stuck is they know what they don't want, but they can't really articulate what they do want. And so this is where they get stuck and they feel frustrated and they, you know, it's really hard to move forward. So um, putting together that effective job search plan, it's important. But take a step back first and really figure out what is it that you want to achieve? What does success look like? And go from there. No, that's a really good point. And I would say when I first started writing, you know, resumes back in the 20th century, you didn't have to know that stuff. You could just position yourself like a jack of all trades and people figured it out. Um, so that is that is a surprising, it's a learning lesson for people that haven't had a hunt, hunt in a while. And, you know, you've got a really good point there too, Virginia, is that you know, if you're doing what everyone else is doing, then you're not really standing out in the market. So you've got to take your job search like to the next step, yeah. to the next level. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Sarah, what you see, you work with job seekers all the time. Is there something that just drives you absolutely nuts? Or what, what drives you most nuts when it comes to client mishaps um, or just job seeker errors? I think the thing that drives me the craziest, and and I'm sure that you guys would probably agree to this as well, is people who rely completely on applicant tracking systems for their job search yeah, and who don't have, as Maureen and others have noted, a strategic approach to their job search. So they have a resume that, you know, may or may not be achievement focused and they're just plugging it along every job that they find on Indeed or on LinkedIn that is interesting. They apply for it. I think you have to really take a step back and ask yourself the question that Maureen identified. Who are your target companies? Who are you? What are you? And then figure out the decision makers that you can have a conversation with that can help you make your reach your goals. You also have to leverage the people that you know in your network. There are people who would champion you and are your fans. And so you've got to not be afraid to have the hard conversations and just let them know what you're looking for and ask for help. So you're talking about sort of bypassing applying online as that first point of entry. I I actually think informational interviews are an underrated secret sauce in the job search. 
it's important to apply for jobs. But if I were to advise a job seeker, I would say maybe spend 10 to 20% of your time working on advertised jobs and the rest of your time cultivating your network and identifying um, target decision makers to have conversations with. Whether or not they have a job open at this company or not, I think it's still worthwhile to start having conversations there. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and I, I too see it as a secret sauce. I sort of feel like informational interviews can, can give you that fast pass to the front of the interviewing line. Um, and I know that a lot of the content that we've developed um, thus far on Jobs for a Secret Weapon teaches people to do just that. Yeah, so really I, I think the thing that people forget is that once a job gets posted online, there's typically, I mean, I'm a former recruiter, so I know this, 80 to 100 applicants for that one position because we've made jobs so app- or so easy to apply. Mm-hmm. But when a hiring manager has a need for a position, often they're thinking, who do I know in my network that could be a fit for this position? Who's worked with me in the past? Who, did, who does my team know that might quick fill this position? So people that are kind of within the scope of that person's realm are often the first that come to mind. And it's a way for for you to kind of skip the the 80 applicant line and move to the top of, of the interview track. Yeah, no, I agree. And what happens is by the time the job has gotten posted, the pipeline is often filled with the people that the hiring manager obtained by going to the network of people they know. Right. Yeah, no, excellent. Um, so Adrian, I'd love to ask you, what advice can you give someone thinking about getting ready to make a career move? Well, there's been lots of good strategies, you know, shared so far, but to kind of build off of what Maureen and Sarah have already mentioned, you know, I would say one of the first things you should do is maybe go back and ask yourself, do you have the right strategy, the right tools and the right people in your corner to help support you during this, you know, this change? And this is important because you can't go into a job search you know, empty handed or unprepared, nor do you have to do it alone. Um, so in addition to having, you know, that really clear target picked out in advance, which truly is number one in the process, like Maureen said, you know, you got to know what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you need to identify, you know, what that looks like um, and be very specific with that. You also want to spend, you know, sufficient amount of time, you know, preparing a toolbox, so to speak to support your success. And just like you can't build a house with only a hammer, you can't conduct a job search with you know, only a resume or only a networking plan. Um, you need to have this diversified box that you're ready. And so the great thing about Job Search Secret Weapon is you know, we have put together this fully, jobs, fully stocked job search box for you with uh, you know, trusted resources and strategies and information as well as access, you know, to our team, which are the right people to support you, which is also really important during the process. No, that's wonderful. Um, So Anna, let me ask you, we talked about, or Adrian answered for us, advice for someone who's getting ready to start a job search. What about someone who is engaged in a job hunt and it is just not going well? What advice would you give them? Well, obviously we've discussed so many great points already. But I think for someone who is going through a job search with no result or not the kind of result that they're hoping for, that can be really demotivating. And I think it's always important to find it in yourself, no matter how demoralized you might feel right now. It's important to take a step back and think about like this piece of advice that someone gave me once. And I always try to remind myself of it as well. Focus on the things you can control rather than the things that are outside of your control. And truth is, in job search, there will always, always be a ton of factors and a ton of variables that you have absolutely zero control over. And a lot of job seekers get hung up on that and they get obsessed with, with those questions and they don't let them show their best or truly tell their story because they are constantly reminded of those things that are outside of their control. So I think it's really important to realize that as as awesome as that would be, you simply cannot log into someone else's brain yeah. and uh, you know help them get rid of judgments or stereotypes or whatever else or the way they make decisions. But what you can do is you can control your narrative. 
You can control the way you communicate with others, the way you network. You can control the things you put or don't put on your resume. And those are the things that truly deserve your time, your effort, your investment. And there's always something that you can learn and take away from every situation, no matter the the outcome, whether it's positive or negative. But it's always just important to go back to this pl- to this place where you know that here's the lesson of how I can do things better. But if I'm not getting you know the exact reaction I was hoping for, it doesn't always mean that I'm in the wrong here. So yeah. you you have to keep going and you have to keep working on yourself. And eventually, you will you will be able to adjust. Of course, you can always adjust your strategy and see what else you might be able to change. But those need to be the factors that you can control. Yeah, control control your narrative. But that, no, that's that's excellent advice because you're right. There's so much that's just beyond our control. We know job search just involves a little bit of luck too, and you can't control yeah. less of that. So thank you, um, Maureen. I want to ask you about people that I know we all, the five of us, see um, people that come to us and and they can do a number of different things. They have diverse skills. They're open to going in lots of different directions. What words of wisdom do you have for those folks? Yeah, so for anybody who knows me, this is one of my favorite uh, things to explain is that (laughs) when you are open to everything, you're focused on nothing. And so this is really important in job search. It's counterintuitive. You think, okay, the more jobs I apply to and the wider I cast my net, the better. But in fact, it has the opposite effect. What you do is you look like a generalist in a market where everybody's looking for a specialist. Mm -hmm. And so what I recommend to people is take a look at industries that you most want to work for. Remember, you can only have one next job. Now, in a gig economy, you can have multiple, but for the sake of argument, let's imagine (laughs) one next job, okay? So if that's the case, then really you've got to narrow your focus in order to find that particular job. So I advise focus on your industry, your position, and the types of companies that you'd like to attract um, when you go out to the market. What tends to happen is when people cast this really wide net, they get stuck. Like they're not getting the right feedback or they're getting negative feedback from jobs that they never wanted in the first place. And so what that does is it just tanks your self-esteem. And, you know, to what Anna was saying about being able to reframe things and being able to like take the positive out of it, when you just keep hitting the bottom and you're getting negative feedback, like at some point, it's just, it, it's really difficult to keep momentum going. And so this is why it's really important to not only, you know, be focused on a particular area, but also be auditing your job search tactics on a regular basis. What might be working online isn't working in real life or the reverse. What might be working in your resume doesn't translate when you work it on your interview or in your information interviews. So like, like Anna said, there's a lot of different moving pieces and really it just makes your life so much easier if you can focus in on one particular area where you're going to spend your time and your effort. Yeah, I know. And, and it helps to overcome the bias that I do think a lot of people on the hiring end face that you know, you need to understand my widget and my industry in order for me to consider you a viable candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think once they hire you, then they appreciate that you're a generalist. It's just they don't realize it. When they're yeah, I think that's fair. But you know, the other yeah. piece that you brought up that I think is really important is what happens is when you are this sort of generalist and you're getting negative or no feedback, you start to make assumptions about what people think about you. Yeah, true. So you're like, oh, it's age or oh, mm-hmm. it's that I don't have this or I don't have that. When really that's not what's going on. Try as much as possible not to personalize it. This, These are just, you know, it's just data. It's just yeah. information you're going to take and incorporate. No, that's great. Um, well, perfect segue into my next question. Um, I want to ask about age discrimination. You know, there's a lot of barriers to entry, um, and one of them is age, um, especially when it comes to hiring practices. Um, others include ethnicity, gender, all of it. Um, and so, Sarah, given that you do have a background in recruiting, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic and how job seekers can address it. It's a great question. And I think age discrimination is real. People, Mm -hmm. some people say it doesn't happen, but I can say from personal experience, when I was early in my career and I was young and hungry, um, there were often people who told me, you know what, you're too young for this. You're, you know, you're, you, you need to, you don't have enough gray hair for this position. So on the flip side, I, I experienced that early in my career 
But I know that people experience it later in life as well. And um, age 50 and up is often the point when people start to experience age discrimination. I think Anna made a really good point that I want to reiterate here, and that's you can control the controllables. In your job search, you can control how you present yourself. And so make sure that you're putting a modern version of yourself forward. Make sure that your marketing devices and your LinkedIn and your personal branding documents are relevant and modern to what today's look is like. Mm -hmm. You also need to examine the way you present yourself in person. Are your clothes modern? Do you have a hairstyle and makeup that's, that fits today? Um, those things are part of your personal brand and so should be examined as well. You also need to take a look at how you deal with technology. Um, this is a really simple um, tip, but um, I've seen some executives with AOL email addresses oh, yeah. or Yahoo or Hotmail. Or <laughs> you really need to make sure that from a technology perspective, you're being modern. So um, if you're trying to position yourself for a role in a company that is very forward thinking, know how to use Slack, know how to use different email channels and things like that, um, that shows that you've kept up with the modern times. Yeah. Um, Get a Gmail. <laughs> it's free. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can't necessarily control what somebody thinks about you, but you can control how you position yourself and present yourself. And I'll, I'll add finally that sometimes I think people get focused on a number and they assume that people are going to discriminate on them based on the fact that they're a certain age and they just take on this weight of, Oh, I know people are going to discriminate against mm -hmm. me because I'm 62 or, and they make assumptions about people. And so their attitude when they're meeting with people is more negative. I think you have to keep a positive attitude and surround yourself with people who are going to point you to the worth that you have and the value that you can bring. Yeah, no, I, it becomes an elephant in the room sometimes when it, it doesn't need to be. Um, and to your point, it does happen on both ends of the age scale. Um, I, th I, th where, what I've seen is that if you can show additionally that you are a lifelong learner, um, whether you're 23 or 53, that that impresses. And I feel like it sort of mitigates the whole age discussion altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, but, I, but I really did literally have someone tell me I didn't have enough gray hair to be sitting at a meeting. Uh, <laughs> You'd be like, talk. <laughs> Don't Don't up. Mind anytime, Sarah. I have lots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Um, Adrian. you mentioned earlier in our conversation, uh, you talked about a toolkit. So I would love to hear if someone comes to you and says, I'm headed out on a job search. I need two tools to take with me. Um, what, what would you say to that job seeker? Mm, that's a tough question. It's a good question. I would say, you know, the theme today that you, you know, that listeners are probably hearing is, you know, you can't rely on just, you know, one tool or one strategy. It's a combination of multiple things and that can look different for different people. But if I was to narrow it down, let's say to like the top one thing to start mm -hmm. with, you know, I'd probably say you, you want to have, you know, a really well-designed professional resume. Um, at some point during the process, it's likely going to be called upon. You know, the resume itself won't get you the job. And there's a lot of misconception that just having a good resume is all you need to succeed. But at some point in the process, you know, an employer is likely going to ask for one. So you don't want to shortchange yourself when you're putting it together um, and rush to put this file together or, you know, do it really haphazardly. You want to ensure, like Sarah had mentioned, that you're presenting yourself, you know, in a modern way. And that is important with the resume as well. And it comes down to both appearance and content of the file. You know, we've talked a little bit about, you know, ensuring that it's customized for every audience and very specific for where you want to go and what you want to do. Uh, but you also want to make sure it's a solid representation of who you are and the value that you bring to employers. So if I was to pick a second thing that I would likely say, you know, having an online presence is really important. So building your LinkedIn profile with some of those exact same strategies. Does it have target and focus? Um, is it going to attract the right people for the right things that you want to do? Ultimately, I would say, you know, if I was just to pick two, which is really hard, I'll give you three if you want. Three? No, no, no. I can't pick three. It's even okay. harder to pick three. It's different for everyone, I would say, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, but no, those foundational pieces of career marketing collateral, I, I agree, are, are, mm -hmm. are really important. 
Um, so Anna, let me come back to you. As you said earlier, there is lots of advice out there about uh, job search. What do you think makes Job Search Secret Weapon unique? Well, I mean, obviously, I love our collaboration, and I think we have a ton to offer. <laughs> uh, a moment of modesty. <laughs> uh, but um, I honestly think that the best part about Job Search Secret Weapon is that we are going and we're already doing it. So technically that's in the present, not the future. Yes, yes. We are filtering every piece of information through five brains, brains of five experts and five people who've seen all of it. I mean, combined, we've, we've literally seen all of it when it comes to job search, career challenges, and that sort of stuff. And I think a lot of the advice in the career space is always... Um, sort of opinion specific. So if there's just one person giving a certain opinion on something, that's just one perspective. Yeah. But it's not always clear to the job seeker because, well, you read something that makes sense to you and you take it and you trust, you put your trust in it. And then for some reason, it's not working. And, you, and then it's kind of your job as the job seeker to figure out why isn't it working for me? What's wrong here? What am I doing wrong? And I think in our case, we're combining five different brains um, and we have different perspectives sometimes, which I think is awesome because yeah. then we can challenge those uh, perspectives and, um, and advice and tips and strategies or whatever. And that allows us to bring a lot more value to the table and really help job seekers look at certain things from different angles and pick the one that will work for them, not just a generic piece of advice that could in theory work for someone, but a very specific targeted piece of advice that will, like, that will likely get them the result that they want. And I think we kind of, in our collaboration, we're bringing pretty different skill sets to the table. Of course, we share a lot of common values and perspectives, but also we sort of complement one another in certain areas and skills, which also makes it a really awesome um, collaboration that we together can bring so that job seekers get a wider perspective. They get not like they get informed about different areas of job search and career growth and career support. And that way, I do believe that uh, they can feel more supported and they can feel like they are part of a community that is truly there for them and is truly interested in helping them get the result that they want. Yeah, no, I, I'm so excited. I, I've always felt like there's no one size fits all when it comes to working one on one with a uh, career coach or a writer. But between the five of us, there should be something that fits for everyone. <laughs> so, um, no, it's been amazing. Um, Maureen, can you close this out and let people know how people can find out more about Job Search Secret Weapon? Yeah. So first and foremost, I would say sign up for our newsletter because that's where you're going to get all the latest and greatest content. Um, that's the stuff that we're developing on a regular basis. So newsletter is number one. Um, check out our website, jobsearchsecretweapon.com. Um, we've been building some quizzes. You have all the social media platforms available to you as well. So that's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and we're working on Pinterest right now. I will just take a moment to um, plug the idea that we are putting together a webinar in the not too distant future. So keep an eye out for that. And in addition to all of our job search secret weapon platforms, you know, going back to Anna's point about the diversity of our group and being able to find something that might be specific for you, each of us individually is as well pushing content out on a very regular basis to help job seekers. So if you know, what works for one doesn't work for the other. Go check out each of our platforms on our social channels and just find something that fits. We're all here to help. And like Adrian said at the beginning, you know, we really, we know this is tough and we're here to help you uh, however we can. Excellent. So jobsearchsecretweapon.com is the place to go to get on our list. Um, and then we are across all the different social media channels. So thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining Thank you for having Thanks. us. You've been listening to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco. To learn more about storytelling strategies to catch the eye of today's skim online readers, hiring and decision makers, go to www.virginiafrancoresumes.com. <laughs>